just me or is backpacking gear all starting to look the same? Tents that used to have bright colors are now mostly white and gray and it seems like a lot of big name brands are just copying each other so that it doesn't much matter which brand you buy, you're going to get the same basic product. But then there are small cottage brands that are making gear that sometimes quite literally stands out. Not just in the way it looks, but in what it does too. It's different, and sometimes different is weird, which is what I'm talking about today. Weird gear that you might actually want. Let's check it out. So a few weeks back, I hiked for four days with practically constant sun exposure, and by the end of the second day, my arms and my neck were really feeling it. What I needed was a good sun hoodie to protect me from getting burnt. And sure, there are a lot of plain sun hoodies available on the market, and then, there's Town Shirt. Town Shirt makes these unique sun hoodies and button up trail shirts that have fun, quirky prints inspired by iconic trails. Designs like this Pacific Crest Trail print or this Appalachian Trail inspired print. I recently picked up the Casa de Luna Manzanita Forest shirt. This design was inspired and selected by Terry and Joe Anderson, two trail angels who opened their home to over 20,000 PCT through hikers over the span of 20 something years. But Town Shirt isn't just fun, funky designs. The hoodies use UPF 50 fabric to keep you safe from the sun, or you can go for these trail-worthy button-up short sleeve shirts that have even more trail-inspired designs. If you're a fan of these cool trails and small companies, it's worth checking out Town Shirt. But one thing I hate is being hot, which is the main reason I don't like hiking in a sun hoodie. I need short sleeves that allow for some air circulation, but that also means lots and lots of sunscreen if I don't want to get burnt. So so instead, I picked up some of these Eclipse sun sleeves that work a lot like a sun hoodie, but when you get hot, instead of changing shirts, you can just take off the sleeves. They're kind of like tube socks for your arms, which is kind of weird, but for two ounces, they are lighter than a bottle of sunscreen and they will last way longer. I could have really used them through the nearly constant sun exposure in the Wind River Range. But the best part is when you start to get too hot, there's no need to switch shirts, no pushing up sleeves that can restrict both air and possibly even blood circulation. Just take your sleeves off and keep hiking. The number one ultralight gear mod is probably cutting off the handle of your toothbrush, which is kind of ridiculous, especially when you can get a free toothbrush like this from Garage Grown Gear, who is this week's sponsor. Order anything from Garage Grown Gear, which all the things I'm talking about today are available at Garage Grown Gear, and you will receive a free ultralight toothbrush as long as supplies last. Garage Grown Gear is a small retailer who specializes in ultralight and cottage gear, selling brands and gear you can't find at any other retailer. And get a free toothbrush when you order something like this next piece of weird gear, toothpaste tablets. I don't know what it is about toothpaste and toothbrushes, but that seems to be one piece of gear that ultralighters would really like to be lighter. Maybe you've seen the way that people will fill small pieces of straw with toothpaste to save weight and space. Well, stop that nonsense. Just get some of these toothpaste tablets, chew it up, being careful not to swallow, and brush your teeth like normal. Only take what you need and save all the weight that your heart desires. It's much better than filling straws with toothpaste. Okay, so one of the absolute best feelings after a long hike is when you finally get to take off your shoes. In the past, I've carried sandals that weigh almost a pound and if I'm being honest, are really hard to justify just for wearing around camp. But there is a pair of ultralight sandals that weigh next to nothing. And when you see these things, you're gonna think, this is a joke, right? Because mayfly sandals are made from corrugated plastic with a little bit of cord and a few pieces of sandpaper stickers to help with traction. Just being honest, these things feel kind of cheap and like something that you could probably make yourself. And I'm sure that you probably could, but they're actually really well designed and put together. And I know from past experience that if I tried to make something like this on my own, it's just not gonna be as good. Mayfly sandals are way less than two ounces and are perfect for milling around camp while giving your feet some space. They don't seem like they would actually work, but they work really well. Personally, I hate things between my toes, so I opted for this design that goes over the bridge of your foot, and they do a much better job than you would expect of protecting your feet from sharp pebbles and sticks and other things that might be lying around camp. So, if you want some nice, well-made, lightweight, kind of quirky sandals, check out Mayfly Sandals. Titanium and cook pots are becoming more and more popular, and if you've ever used one of these, you've probably noticed how hot the handles can get. I've seen people have covered their handles in electrical tape and shrink wrap plastic to try to provide some extra insulation. A lot of times I just use my sleeve as a sort of makeshift oven mitt, but these handles get so hot that I've actually melted the polyester on one of my hoodies before. Which is why I was interested in this tiny little pot lifter from Sulok 46. 
Am I saying that right? You've probably seen the standard pot lifters that come with a lot of commercial cook sets. That's exactly what the mix-up pot lifter is. It's just tiny, which makes it look a little ridiculous, but it's also what makes it really cool because it only weighs five grams, easily stows away in your pot, and when it's time to cook, there's no need to worry about what you're going to use as a pot grabber, no need to modify your pot. You can easily and securely grab your pot or the lid without worrying about burning your fingers. So for the last few trips that I've been on, I've seen very little rain. But if you ever hiked in the rain for prolonged periods of time, then you know how annoying it is when you have wet and cold hands. If you saw my Olympic National Park video last year, you might have noticed that I was wearing one blue latex glove. And it wasn't just because I'm weird. It was to keep my hand dry while I carry my camera and my tripod. The only problem is that latex tends to tear after just one use. So I picked up these strange little Dyneema rain mitts from Hightail Design. They are much more durable than latex, come on and off easily, and only weigh an ounce. Due to the lack of rain, I haven't had a good chance to wear them since I've got them, but I can already tell that they work much better than my stupid little latex gloves. Plus, they look really cool with this topo map design. So, if your hands get cold and wet in the rain, check out Hightail Dyneema Rain Mitts. And if you like supporting small brands, be sure to check out this video about five cottage brands you need to know about. Be sure to check out Garage Grown Gear, who specializes in ultralight and cottage gear. And as always, thanks for watching.